This video will walk you through the disassembly and reassembly of the Microsoft Surface Go 4. Before you begin, make sure your device is powered off and disconnected from the power supply and your battery is discharged to below 25%. Ensure that your work surface is covered with an ESD-safe non-marring material and that it's clean and clear of any debris or abrasive particles. Equip an anti-static wrist strap and refer to the Microsoft Service Guide to put the device into display replacement mode. To begin disassembly, lay the device screen side down and open the kickstand to about 90 degrees. Hold the kickstand behind the hinge with the finger and use your T4 Torx driver to remove the two hinge screws on each side. While grasping both hinges, lower them to about 45 degrees and then pull the kickstand up and away to free it from the screw bosses. Firmly hold the center of the device in place with one hand and then pull the kickstand with a moderate amount of force until the foam inserts slide out of the device. If the kickstand feels stuck, make sure the screw bosses are free and haven't slipped back into their recesses. Inspect the kickstand's foam tabs for any damage and make sure they're complete and show no signs of tearing. If the tabs or pads show any sign that they may have torn or left pieces behind in the device, proceed to the chassis replacement procedure. To remove the display, begin by inserting an opening tool to widen the gap between the right speaker mesh and the display. Turn the opening pick around and press it between the speaker mesh and the chassis, pushing the speaker mesh towards the inside of the device. Repeat this process for the left speaker mesh. To separate the display, we'll be using an opening pick and debonding tool, but we need to make sure that we never insert the pick more than we need to for the next few steps. Measure your opening pick and mark a 2mm depth and an 8mm depth on it. This will help guide you as you slice through the adhesive securing the display. Insert your marked pick into the debonding tool, making sure all lines are visible and facing towards the top of the tool, and then clamp the debonding tool on the edge of your workbench. Using a 3mm hex wrench, adjust the tool to the 2mm mark on your pick. When using the debonding tool, make sure not to insert the pick deeper than instructed for each edge. The 2mm setting should be used for the left, right, and bottom edges of the device. The 8mm setting should only be used on the top edge. Place the right side of the speaker edge of the device into the debonding tool above the pick, making sure the tip of the pick enters the gap you made in the speaker grill between the display and the chassis. Using both hands, slide the right edge of the display through the debonding tool. When you get to the bottom corner, slowly rotate the device to slide the pick around the bottom right corner of the screen. Slide the bottom edge of the display across the debonding tool. Repeat this process for the left side of the device. Adjust the pick height to your 8mm mark and then place the top left corner of the device into the debonding tool, making sure the pick enters the gap between the display and the chassis. Slide the top edge of the device across the debonding tool to cut the final bit of adhesive. Lift each edge of the display to gently make sure there's no remaining adhesive. If you find any, use an opening pick to cut it. Gently lift the top edge of the display and carefully flip it over and lay it down next to the chassis. Using a spudger, remove the display cable shield and then lift the hinged locking flap on the display cable's ZIF connector. Gently grab the cable and pull it straight out of its socket. With the display removed, inspect the battery for damage. If it shows any of the signs below, the whole device must be replaced. Evidence of leaking, dents, swelling, surface scratches, damaged wires, discoloration, or signs of corrosion including visual signs or a smell like acetone. If no signs of damage are found, place a battery cover over the battery for the remainder of the repair. Use a Phillips screwdriver to remove the two screws securing the battery connector, and then lift the battery connector up and away from the motherboard. Using a Phillips 00 screwdriver, remove the six screws securing the antenna deck. and then lift it up and off. Insert the point of a spudger under the camera connector shield and then lift it up and off. Lift the hinged locking flap up to unlock the rear camera's cable and then use some tweezers to slide the cable out of its connector. Use a Phillips 00 driver to remove the two screws securing the rear camera and then use a spudger to lift the camera out of its recess. Next, lift the hinged locking flap to unlock the front camera's cable, and then use some tweezers to grab the cable by its plastic pull tab and pull it straight out of its socket. 
Lift the front camera out to remove it. Repeat this same process to remove the IR camera. Insert the point of a spudger under the metal shield above the SD slot near the bottom left corner of the device and lift to remove the shield. Use your spudger to lift the locking flap on the SD slot ZIF connector and then use some tweezers to grab the SD slot cable by its plastic pull tab and pull the cable straight out of its connector. Repeat this process to disconnect the blade connector's cable found underneath. Use the point of a spudger to lift the locking flap on the small speaker cable ZIF connector near the top right corner of the device and then use your tweezers to grab the cable by its plastic pull tab and pull it straight out of its socket. Next, use the point of a spudger to push up alternating sides of the larger speaker cable, walking it out of its socket. The motherboard is held in place by seven Phillips screws. Remove those, and then lift the left corner of the motherboard up using a spudger. Grabbing the motherboard with your fingers, lift the left edge of the motherboard up and to the left to remove it. The left and right speakers are held in place by two Phillips screws. Remove those screws and then lift the speakers up and towards the center of the device to separate them from the chassis. Lift the flaps to deroute the speaker wires and then lift the speakers out of the chassis. Remove the two Phillips double zero screws securing the SD slot making sure not to damage or remove the foam pads surrounding it. Pull the SD slot towards the left of the device to remove it. Carefully lift the right edge of the blade connector's cable to unstick it from the chassis, and then slide an opening pick under the entire length of the cable to fully separate it. Use a Phillips double zero driver to remove the two screws securing the blade connector, and then lift the connector out of the chassis. If you're transferring components into a new chassis, make sure to install two new T5 Torx hinge screws in both the left and right hinges. Place the blade connector into its recess in the side of the frame, making sure the circular tabs go into their cutouts. And then reinstall the two Phillips double zero screws securing it. Press the cable back onto the frame, securing it with its adhesive. Insert the SD slot into its recess at a slight downward angle, making sure the cutout on its right edge goes under its clip, and then secure it with two Phillips screws. Insert both the left and right speakers, making sure the screw holes go over their posts in the chassis. Reinstall two Phillips Zero screws in both speakers to secure them to the chassis. Route the speaker cable, making sure it runs under the plastic flaps along the center of the chassis. Insert the right edge of the motherboard into the chassis, making sure no cables get stuck underneath the board while setting it in place. Reinstall the seven Phillips Zero screws, securing the motherboard to the chassis. Slide the larger speaker cable into its slot on the motherboard, and then insert the smaller speaker cable into its connector and lock it into place using the hinged locking flap. Grip the blade connector cable by its plastic tab and slide it into its connector on the motherboard. Lock it into place with the hinged locking flap. Repeat this process for the SD slot cable. Lay a new metal shield in place and press it down until it snaps into place. Push down on the battery connector and secure it with two new Phillips Zero screws. Insert the IR camera into its recess in the chassis, inserting the cable into its connector. Flip down the locking hinge to secure the cable and then make sure to clean the lens with a microfiber cloth. Repeat this process for the front camera. Clean the rear camera lens with a microfiber cloth and then insert the rear camera into its slot in the chassis. Use some tweezers to insert the cable into its connector, secure it with two Phillips double zero screws, and then insert a new camera connector shield. Lower the antenna deck in place and reinstall the six double zero screws securing it to the chassis. Remove the battery cover and then clean off any remaining speaker mesh from the chassis. Make sure all the old display adhesive has been removed from the chassis, and then use some isopropyl alcohol and a cotton swab to remove any remaining residue. Apply new speaker mesh, and then lay out new display adhesive. Carefully apply four new strips of adhesive to the chassis, leaving the remaining liner on for now. 
Before reconnecting the display, thoroughly check the device enclosure for any loose items. Pay special attention to the area around the battery and check areas with magnets for items that may have been attracted. Wipe the area around the cameras with a lint-free cloth and make sure that it's free of any dust and then lay the display face down on the bottom half of the device. Connect the display cable and then install a new display cable shield. Flip the display over and remove the protective liners from the adhesive strips. Use the lip of the chassis to align the top edge of the device and then lower the display into place making sure it sits flush. To bond the display, place the bonding frame onto the device and push down around the perimeter to secure it. Place a foam pad that is symmetrical and covers the full perimeter of the frame over the bonding frame. Next, lower a weight that is at least 50 pounds, but no more than 66 pounds, onto the foam pad. The weight should fully cover the full perimeter of the bonding frame and have consistent flatness to allow for even weight distribution. Leave the weight on for two minutes. Flip the device over, position the hinges at about a 45 degree angle, and then gently slide the kickstand tabs about three quarters of the way into their slots. Reseat the screw bosses into their recess, and then grasp the hinges and open the kickstand to about 90 degrees. Apply some Loctite activator to the new hinge screws and a drop of thread locker in each screw hole, and then use your T4 Torx driver to reinstall new hinge screws. Fold the kickstand down, remove any plastic from the kickstand if present, and then verify that its edges line up with the case and there are no obvious gaps. With the device reassembled, power it on and run SDT to ensure all features and functions operate as expected. 